I'm going to introduce the uh, Power Pilot Grid Tie system uh, that we've uh, started offering recently. Um, talk through how they how the system uh, works. Uh, got a video of the system uh, that we uh, demonstrated technically in uh, Italy in Rieti. Um, and yeah. So uh, when doing a grid tie system to be able to uh, get our gen head connected to the grid, there's a variety of different issues uh, we need to deal with. Um, normally our equipment is designed to run as an independent generator, uh, not synchronized to a main grid. Things we need to do uh, is we need to synchronize to that grid, which will be described. There's a variety of um, <clears throat> switching, breakers, other components within the the topology of your site, um, your facility, how that all integrates. Um, there's a set of different safeties uh, that are important within the system to consider. Uh, the wiring and topology, both of the, the generator, how it's wired up and how it's going to connect to uh, the grid uh, connection at your site is important, as well as the um, breaker topology, wiring, and other things within, within the site and the drop to your location. Um, <clears throat> and depending on the location, there's a few different um, dynamics that uh, will be described that um, we're controlling and that we may need to tune to make that system work in, in a given location and work to the grid. So one of the tasks in Italy is we tested this at a, uh, in the U.S. on a 60 hertz grid, uh, getting these dynamics to work over in a 50 hertz market, we needed to retune those things. Um, so when we were selecting uh, grid tie equipment, we went through a pretty extensive list of some of the different uh, suppliers, and there's a lot of different options out there. Uh, we went with Deep Sea uh, as the supplier. The, the grid tie system that we're, we're using is the, uses the uh, Deep Sea 8610 um, controller, um, and Deep Sea has a, a nice um, optimization of uh, different features and price points that, that make sense. Uh, they can do mains export and, and other things that we care about. Uh, one of the nice features, we haven't yet implemented it, but as Jim mentioned, uh, the, these deep sea units can um, offer the potential to do some of this remote monitoring on, on the device. They can connect to GSM modems and other things. Um, we'll have to tie those systems together to report uh, our information back, but they're designed around being connected to a genset and communicating out uh, information on the status of that gen set. Um, <clears throat> so to get into the, the technical description of how uh, grid tie works, I wanted to provide a little preface on some basics of electricity here. Um, so there's AC and DC power, alternating current and uh, direct current power. Um, DC power, as shown in the top, um, voltages and uh, don't move around. They're held constant, the type of thing you get off, off of a car battery, uh, generally solar systems. Some of these small microgrids run DC. Um, what grids run uh, are AC um, power running at 50 or 60 hertz, uh, frequently created from what you'd call spinning media generators, um, devices that have coils and uh, produce this power or use inverters to produce AC power. Um, so one of the things we need to do to connect this device to a grid is be able to match uh, the, the power coming out of this and get it into uh, synchronization with the grid um, to provide power back. So also in a very simplified explanation of how the uh, generator we're using works, uh, there's a series of coils around the outside of the generator. In, on the 20K, there's four poles around it. And there's, a, there's an electromagnet inside that generates a field. It gets excited. It generates a magnetic field. Um, and as that, that, the um, rotor spins around, that field rotates and uh, ends up creating uh, increases in voltage and current around each of those individual coils. Um, there's other generators that use permanent magnets and just have that field present. Um, in this case, we're generating that field, and that becomes important in, in how we control the dynamics. Um, some details regarding how power works. Um, so there's a few different ways uh, you can measure power, and they have different features. Um, and 
w one of the uh, measurements is called volts a volt amps, or you'll see gen sets ca called out in KVA. Um, and if you, if you uh, have a voltmeter uh, or a current meter, uh, a true RMS meter, and you hook that up to, um, to a wire, you measure the amps, you measure the volts, you multiply those together uh, independently, you'll get a measurement of what you call KVA. Um, and that's called apparent power um, or resistive power, or it'll occur, it'll be accurate under resistive loads technical details here, but um, something that's important is there's reactive amps um, or KVAR and these all tie into this power factor. Um, one of the features that we need to control is we need to make basically reactive amps are um, non, non useful current, things that we uh, don't actually end up uh, supplying real power. Uh, watts, what you measure or hear reported for lights and other things, that's a measurement of real power. That's actual uh, power that you can do things with. Um, the reactive amps and reactive power uh, ends up not really doing anything except heating the wires in the generator in your distribution system and causing heat losses and losses in efficiency or causing your breakers to flip um, due to that high current. So one of the things that the uh, controller needs to do is be able to manage and uh, maintain a power factor and keep the reactive amps in a reasonable uh, range. So anyway, lots of details there, but it helps to understand. Um, so when we actually want to synchronize the system and connect it to the grid, there's a few different things that we're bringing into sync. Uh, we'll have a uh, a grid signal here, uh, say voltage, and we're, uh, so say this is the grid, and when our generator is up and running, running either 1800 uh, RPM or 1500 RPM, uh, it'll at least be approximating that, but it might be a little bit off. We need to make sure it's, it's held exactly to that, that frequency. We also need to make sure that these peaks end up overlapping if we, um, within this device, we have a contactor um, that when the system is started up is open and disconnected from the grid. If we close that contactor and everything is not synchronized, you get a very high peak uh, current uh, and you can cause both high torques in the generator, in the engine, other things like that. So one of the processes we're going through is getting our phases aligned we also need to bring uh, voltage in line to the grid. We get those two, uh, two waveforms in line and in phase. Once those are in phase, we can actually close that contactor and not have any real issue, uh, any, um, any jump in power or uh, weird fluctuations. So there's a huge, uh, there's a major step that the controller goes through in doing that. So you go from the genset starting up like you've seen here. Unfortunately, we don't have a piece of equipment to, to show it. I'll show you a video of the systems running uh, physically here today. But um, we go from the generator being available, up to speed, having started running, but not closed to grid. Um, we, on this device, will tell it to synchronize. It will go through a period where you'll see a screen here. It, um, ends up matching the volts, matching our frequency, uh, and matching our phase. And you'll see that on the display. We get all of those things synchronized once it's in this little window here. This uh, dot is in this window, and our volts and frequency is happy. It'll close the contactor, and then we'll be cut, the generator will now be coupled to grid. Um, so uh, you go through that synchronizing step. Once we're on, on grid, uh, we now end up basically, as the throttle opens up, prior to being, off, um, prior to being on grid, the governor adjusts the throttle to maintain a good constant RPM independent of loading. Once we're, that contactor is closed, the grid is basically 
capable of driving the generator. It holds uh, frequency, and what the throttle ends up doing is actually being able to push that real power back onto the grid, and that's where you get uh, your kilowatt, out, uh, kilowatt hours exported and uh, you know, run your meter backwards. So there's the basic process there. We can uh, then decouple at any point, or we also maintain a watch on the, uh, on the grid itself and make sure that there's no issues uh, that would cause the generator to overload or that the, the grid itself is uh, seemingly going down. And if that case occurs, we can decouple from the grid uh, and go back to just running uh, without any load on it and no connection to the grid. Um, <clears throat> so there's a few different uh, major control things that we're trying to do um, here. And there's two major components that we're using to do the control. That we've looked at the, uh, the governor before. There's a Woodward governor on here. It's an electronic governor, which we can command, uh, we can control. Um, and we, we're able to send a bias signal, or the deep sea can send a bias signal to uh, get the governor to uh, either adjust its speed when it's synchronizing or adjust the amount of power going out uh, when it's connected to the grid. The other major component that we're controlling is what's called the ABR, uh, and that's on the standard generator. Uh, we also send it a bias signal, and the ABR is what controls the field to maintain correct voltage. So when you're independent of the grid, <clears throat> that's what makes sure that you're running at 120 volts or or whatever you set the, uh, the voltage you want out to be. Um, once we're on grid, the AVR is what's able to manage the, uh, the reactive amps. If your field is out of range, it has to control that to not develop too much current and actually get the field to the right size so that you have a good power factor and you're actually pushing just pure power out and not, um, uh, not reactive current that, that's doing nothing. Um, so those are the major things that we, uh, that we need to control. There's, uh, there's a variety of stages we go through uh, where it's maintaining voltage. It then synchronizes, goes through a period of frequency matching and voltage matching. And then on grid, uh, it, uh, it'll make sure that it's exporting a certain amount of power uh, and maintaining reactive power as well. Um, as Jim mentioned, we can also separate of being grid tied with the deep sea we're able to have a series of generators on a single bus that will load share, meaning that they uh, don't, one generator doesn't end up taking uh, over an excessive amount of the, of the load. You can have a communications bus that will, will manage that power distribution. Um, so one of the major things that we need to do uh, for safety on, on the grid systems is use some form, most uh, utilities and uh, regulations will require uh, that you have some form of detection that the grid has gone down and uh, in that case pull the system off of the grid so you don't, uh, don't energize that grid and uh, cause issues. So the deep sea can support both what's called rock off or uh, vector shift uh, which allows um, detection of that and it can open the contactor uh, if the grid has gone down. Um, there are different methodologies, different countries uh, will use and require different systems there. We have a schematic of uh, the wiring that goes on in here. There's a variety of components. I'm um, not going to go into detail there, but uh, depending on what, uh, what grid you're connecting to, there will be different uh, topologies that exist. Uh, sometimes you'll have delta, sometimes you'll have uh, y. In Europe, they, uh, they actually switch neutral. There's a variety of little uh, electrical issues to, to take into consideration when, when uh, connecting the system. Uh, these are likely some of the most common uh, topologies uh, that we'll need to connect to. Uh, there, we may encounter some others, and for customers that are interested, it'll be important for us to, to know what uh, type of topology you're going to have at your grid connection, uh, and we'll need to work with you over that. Uh, there's a variety of features that the, the Deep Sea offers, also a variety of features we've worked through so far and are capable of uh, really supporting and have the knowledge on, and we're continuing to, to work through providing others. Um, 
the deep sea provides this loss of mains detection either through vector shift or rock off. Uh, export control, managing the amount of power that we can send out through the system is uh, supported and is what we did over in Italy. Um, there's something called no break transfer, which is uh, if you have an islanded site where, um, or you, you have your factory, your facility, <clears throat> and you have a very unstable grid and you want to be able to maintain uh, power and not have the grid go down temporarily, uh, the no break transfer allows you to switch the gen set, uh, the mains over to the gen set and the gen set back to the mains cleanly while maintaining your facility's power. Um, right now, uh, we don't support that with this equipment. Uh, with added equipment uh, and automatic breaker, transfer breakers and the 8660, there's ways to get that working. In Italy, that's not that important because they're really looking to export power to grid and uh, they don't really need power after, uh, after the uh, grid has gone down. In fact, it's also your, the regulations require that you you're not able to tap power inside your facility. You have to export to grid and then buy it back from the utility. Uh, and they, they actually want to epoxy down all of the components so that you can't tap in and get through the, the tariff things. Um, islanding relates to that no break, break uh, transfer, which is the capacity to um, take your facility offline and still run the gen set separate of the grid. Um, there's a variety of components, and the deep sea offers a lot of these features. Um, right now, we're just stepping through all of the, the configuration on the systems that, uh, uh, that we're working over, and the potential is there. There's just a lot of wiring details and uh, things case to case, and we're stepping through those. Um, load sharing uh, is a feature which is the uh, Deep Sea provides via um, what they call the MSC link, which allows multiple generators to see the load that each of them is carrying and manage their throttles independently to keep that microgrid stable uh, and uh, no single generator uh, sharing uh, an excess of the burden. Um, and that is supported. We tested that, uh, that feature over in Italy. Um, <clears throat> Right now, the systems uh, will close to a dead bus. Uh, a dead bus is defined as basically lacking any, any voltage on it. Um, and so if a breaker is down or other things, the equipment will actually close to that. So there are some transfer switches and other things that will be required to uh, ensure that the genset will not uh, close to a grid uh, that is down. They will currently detect that the grid is going down um, and there's a couple of uh, options for preventing it from then closing to the grid, which is one of the features uh, that many utilities will require. Um, earth fault detection is another uh, potential uh, thing that may be important. The deep sea offers it, um, and we're just currently not supporting that. Um, the, the basic uh, architecture of what we're, we've got here, if you look through the uh, deep sea guide to uh, load sharing uh, um, to uh, I have a link at the end. They provide a, a long extensive list of various topologies and controllers they use. Um, our system extent right now is within this blue circle. We have a contactor that we're able to uh, control with the 8610 and manage uh, and connect also uh, direct to grid. Um, and depending on your use case uh, and needs for no break transfer or other things. There's a variety of other components that may be necessary to, uh, to provide those uh, features. Uh, so uh, the trip over to Italy, one of the things we were doing was setting up the first prototypes of this system and uh, proving it out. So uh, we did that with two power pallets, um, got it tuned and configured to uh, 50 hertz. And uh, Got that running. So since we don't have a physical version here, just for oof. <laughs> yeah, right, and then the lights come on. Yep. 
Um, so those are two 8610 units connected to grid. Um, H running in parallel. And in this case, we we're exporting about like 11 kW back to grid on that one. There were the paralleled systems in Italy. Um, and I'm sure there's a number of different questions, so, um, or maybe there are, yep. Yeah, how stable is the mains frequency in Italy? And like, how much could, in other words, if it goes down to 57 hertz and up to 63, yep. the, do you track that much? Or? Right, the, yes, the, the deep sea can actually, uh, when you go through that synchronizing phase, will, um, uh, it's capable of moving the generator speed around quite a bit. Uh, about we set it to uh, 45 RPM. I, I'm not sure how many hertz that that works out to, uh, plus or minus. But uh, it's able to uh, drive the generator speed up or down during that synchronizing phase, um, and uh, so it can match that. And then uh, we were seeing that the at least on the leg of the mains that we were out on, or the area that we were on voltage moved around quite a bit um, during the uh, weekend when we were grid tying went up to something like 400 volts and then during the work days it was down to like 380 or something um, this can do voltage matching as well and and manage a good deal of, the, of that to to close um, so yeah you, the grid voltage was moving around quite a bit i think the u.s grid tends uh, at least around here doesn't move uh, quite that much but we were able to to get that uh, to work out uh -huh. uh, right, right. Uh, the grid itself being imbalanced. Well, the, the generators are, you don't want to go over, I believe, a 30% imbalance between legs, uh, more than that. Um, and I don't think the most grids would probably really show that much uh, imbalance. Um, uh, but yeah, that's what the, the McCalty specs, I believe. You've, and uh, uh, yeah, so we can support up to that. The deep sea will see the, the current move around on each leg, monitors all of that. Um, yeah. yeah. I think you see some pretty big variations occasionally because people switch on and off, even big things sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes only on one leg. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it depends where you are. If you're on a big building with elevators, uh -huh. you'll see voltage swings during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as Somebody you with big machine tools going off. Right. And yeah, with the power factor as well, uh, you know, depending on how inductive your system is, you'll get weird uh, shifts around and, and large motors and other other things turning on. Uh, so these yeah. tolerance ranges can be programmed with the CPC. Yeah. So what happens when you're outside the range? Uh huh. The, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you can configure, <laughs> and one of the major uh, processes of getting this set up, the Deep Sea has a piece of configuration software. There's about something on the order of 300 different parameters that you can set uh, that we had to step through to get our, our system to work. Um, and we're working through documenting those to help support these different applications um, and utilizing, obviously, Deep Sea's material. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of that's configurable. There's a good deal of it which is configurable just through the fascia on the front of this um, for some of the uh, minimum volt, genset minimum voltage outputs before connecting, uh, uh, upper voltage disconnect, all, all kinds of different things that you can set. And you can get those windows dialed in and then details of the exact mains configuration you have to do through software uh, and uh, yeah, other things, other things like that are have to be uploaded via software. And for the mode would be once you're outside the range, it, it disconnects. Uh, yeah, you can set up a lot of those to either uh, just have a warning or have an electrical trip, um, which will cause the the breaker to first uh, flip, and then it'll actually shut the genset uh, off as well. In a lot of those cases. Um, Major concern for us. Mm -hmm. Right. The grid is unstable. It, yep. The quality is okay, but it goes off. Yep. Uh, 
Yeah. Just once a week. Right. And usually when you need the energy. Right. Um, so yes. being able to overcome that uh, initial yeah. configuration and yeah. be able to enable that mode would be really important. Right. So yeah, we know that's uh, likely. And I just wanted to, that's why I was kind of being pretty explicit about where we're at right now with the equipment we're offering. Um, the, uh, yeah, islanding, especially for, uh, you know, these uh, applications in more, uh, uh, yeah, in developing world and things like that, um, where grid's unstable, um, that'll be likely very important. And uh, there's a few different routes that we can uh, take to provide that, and we need to look at the, the topologies that'll make sense and what recommendations to provide. The, um, the Deep Sea offers a, a 8620 version, which allows an individual genset to provide islanding. Um, uh, or you can go a route of using the 8660 um, as another controller, so you could have one or more gensets connected to a, generate, a genset bus, and then uh, the 8660 monitors the mains export or import of power and sees if the mains goes down uh, and it can uh, pull, open that breaker and island you and then, um, and then yeah, manage the gen sets within that island and then do this no break transfer allowing the, the, uh, the systems to synchronize back to mains and be able to close the contactor keeping continuous power going and no need to like shut the systems off and shut your island down and, and close everything to mains again. Um, so those features are available. They'll likely require uh, for that islanding uh, for multi-set systems an, an additional box uh, like this for that, that mains uh, uh, feature. And um, yeah, so we need to step through uh, that development to offer that. But yeah, islanding, it'll, um, yeah, I'd be curious if people here, since we're doing polls today, uh, of the, how many people are interested in the genset system here? Or the grid tie system? <laughs> yeah, and in that application, islanding, uh, where, where do you think that's critical? You've got it, you've got it. Okay, so about maybe half uh, or a third. But it's that. In yeah, if you have a feed-in tariff, is islanding, you've got a good stable grid, islanding of merit important to you or not? Yeah, that's, that's the motive is not really critical. And it seems like from a regulatory perspective, it's not even feasible to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, within it. There's still a large section of the, yeah. the world. Uh, oh, with, with oh I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that deep, from my understanding, deep sea still offers it. Oh, yes. This, this is this. We don't necessarily right. understand and have integrated it, but that doesn't mean that you could call their support and order right. that question. If, if, if you're interested in taking that project on immediately within your capacity, yes. Uh, Deep Sea offers, there's a huge amount of different uh, options and, and topologies and other things. What, we, what we'd like to get to is really understand the, the specific, this, you know, unique use cases and be able to, out of the various configurations, really be able to strongly support, you know, uh, a few of those different options uh, since it's almost infinite in terms of the, the different ways you can set this up. So we're uh, trying to be able to narrow that down. Yeah. Actually, in, uh, in Italy, you need uh, an external equipment, which is called right. uh, interface protection. Yes. Uh, control the grid parameter and disconnect the generator in case right. of uh, variation of right. the grid parameter. So, yes. Actually, I think my last slide uh, covered that, and I forgot. I missed it. This should allow yeah. uh, a larger range of parameters in order not to disconnect from the grid. Right. Um, yeah, you can dial you can dial those in to, to the ranges that so fall within the spec, voltage. right? And you know we've uh, a lot of the equipment will require very tight frequency uh, control, and we've 
we've seen with our governor tunings, we're able to maintain 0.2 hertz uh, control over the generator when it's active, which is important. Is but the, the low voltage right through also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the one of the important points is uh, uh, for a lot of markets, the utilities will require things like this, like the Technotica system. Um, there is a separate box uh, that the utility wants control over. They, they provide a, um, a set of sensing equipment that's independent of our equipment um, that will detect the, the mains going down as well. Uh, it also, the equipment they were installing there also has a uh, radio uh, transceiver so that the linemen in the area, if they need to fix something, they can actually shut uh, that system down and guarantee that it's offline. Um, and so there are case by case the different utilities uh, and markets will have different requirements for that, that secondary box to allow a grid tie system uh, to be in place. Um, so that's an important aspect to consider. Yep. Is this equipment already available? Uh, this equipment? Uh, yeah, the, the grid tie system with the 8610 is, is available. Um, uh, and yeah. Uh, this specifically from us? Yeah. Yes, you can talk with sales. Um, but we're stepping through the, um, yeah, the different use cases and we're working with Italy on that. Uh, we'll need to look at the sales would know in terms of the queue and other things as to whether. Okay. Just so, okay. Uh, yes. So, presumably, yeah. That's a twenty kilowatt. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can talk with sales. Uh, Deep Sea comes out of the UK, uh, and if you were looking at the the specific topologies, I pulled just the fifty hertz ones out. But yeah. Um, yeah. The. The various protection, um, yeah, it's, it's got the feature sets and uh, other things that depending on the market, you can configure it to, to meet, um, uh, meet those requirements uh, as well. But there will, there will likely be that, that secondary box that, uh, um, that may be required to, maybe, to get a permitted grid system. The thing that's happened here, um, these boxes used to be What was the question? Still no um, no. Not supported through us, but yeah, supported deep, deep sea. So right. I mean, right. There's no 
Right. It's not that it's not supported, it's just that at this point we don't have enough internal knowledge to be able to set yeah. that up. And APL is a company we can't help. Yeah. Help. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. well, it's it's a lot of details. Data. Yes. That you know, if, if the operator does the wrong things in the sinking, that can damage the equipment. Well, You're the deep sea the takes operator. care of. Now, the deep sea is pretty good at managing all of that itself. It it manages all the synchronizing. It's not in the operators. It's pretty ridiculous. You get start and it does everything. Yeah, it's pretty automated. That's just a, a very technical description of how, how the control system actually works and when you really dive into it. This was the kind of an internal, derived from an internal presentation I gave to really also describe how, how all of this works. And Charles, hopefully everyone's... Skill, you don't need any of this. You just, you just put lights across your generator to the mains leg and you move things around until the lights go off. This thing is basically in sync and you throw yep. the switch. Old style. Okay. Yep. Okay, so mine's okay. But okay, to carry on, yeah. If, right, right. It, yeah, but right. It it is designed to not allow that to happen. But uh, but in theory, if something were um, the main issues is normally the grid is so massive you're, and your current things it's unlikely you might throw a breaker you might other things upstream. What'll happen? You know, you know you're talking megawatt scale generation capacity out there and high you know large wires, but with our equipment, uh, if, you, if you connect it out of phase, you'll end up with very high currents, and the gen head itself will actually develop quite a lot of torque against, against the grid, and that can actually cause mechanical stress. So you have to be in phase to, to not have that, that kind of thing occur. Um, but when it's got everything in sync and it closes, it, basically nothing happens until it continues to drive the throttle up and actually push you know, push this gen head against the grid and start exporting power. So the newer one, can you damage, can you throw breakers up the, you know, and, and disrupt your neighbors and, and stuff? Mm. My experience with idiots who run generators <laughs> across the grid um, in places where you know the power goes out, so they just connect the generator to their house, leaving their house connected to the grid. It's the only damage is quite often to the generator yeah. because the generator comes back out, of, the mains comes back out of phase and causes the problem it's just described. And that usually blows breakers on the generator, it generates some smoke. <laughs> and happy on that. But the neighbors are okay. The hard neighbor knows no kids. <laughs> what, what is your uh, situation that you're running? It's a, sp uh, no, a grid I, I, or I've smaller grids? In telecommunications, I've worked with generators for years. So yeah. You know, have to deal with all sorts of grief, but the typical one is the homeowner who gets hold of the generator and never puts in a transfer box. Yeah. And just like sort of clips it across with some battery cables and fires the thing up and it runs for two days and the power comes back and they've still got the thing running. Ah, yeah. And then, you know, just blood oh, kills heck the Heck goes this. So. Yep. Yeah, no, this, is, this is why you. This is why you get that equipment to, to take care of all of that. Yeah. We have an automatic transfer switch, which is an exclusive. Right. It's actually a manual transfer switch. Right. Or a manual transfer switch, which is totally exclusive. And you, you, know, you break from the grid, you connect to your generator, the things are separated and decoupled, and then you manually say, oh, the grid's back. I'm going to go back over. Extra money. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, the 8660 box is that automatic type yeah. system that can come in one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you um, well, the interesting thing in Europe, learning about uh, the European grid, I, I was glad we had Phil over, that they, there they... Uh, the whole grounding system and neutral system is operated differently and you switch neutral uh, and neutral is a floating 
uh, against the grid. Um, we haven't run into grounding issues surrounding it, but, uh, but yeah, there are different arrangements to use and uh, different topologies depending on the, the grid situation that you want to ground it or earth it. Okay, thank okay. you, Baron. Yep. <clears throat>